Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing fine. And today we're gonna have the final part uh, of the marionettes. So let's do this. The respiration ceased and with scarcely a tremor, Chandler expired. That where we finished yesterday. Close, following upon his last brief, came the Negress. Negress. Bringing the medicine with a hand, gently pressing upon the closed eye eyelids, Dr. James told her, told her of the end. Not grief, but an hereditary. Hereditary. Not grief but an, an hereditary reproachment with death in the abstract moved her to a dismal, watery, snuff, snuffling, watery, dismal, watery, snuffling, accompan accompanied by her jeremade. There now, it's in the Lord hands, he am the ju judge of the transgressor and the support of them in distress. He won't have support us now. Cindy done paid out la the last quarter for this bottle of physic and they never come to no use. Do I understand, asked Dr. James, that Mrs. Chandler has no money. Money, sir? You know what make Miss Amy fell down. And so weak. S starvation, sir. Nothing to eat in this house but some crumbly crackers in three days. That angel sell her finger rings and watch a month ago. This fine house, sir, with the, with the red carpets and shiny bureau, bureaus, it's all hard, and the man talking scandalous about the rent. That devil, excuse me, Lord, he's done your hands for judgment now. He made way with everything. The physician's silence encouraged her to continue. The history that he gleaned from Cindy's disordered monologue was an old one of illusion, of willfulness, disaster, cru cruelty, and pride. Standing out from the blurred panorama of her gabble, were little clear pictures, an ideal home in the far south, a quickly repented marriage, repented, an unhappy season full of wrongs and abuse, and of late, an inheritance of money that promised deliverance. Deliverance. Its seizure and waste by the wo dog wolf, wolf during the, a two-month absence and his return in the midst of the scandalous carols, scandalous carols, unobtruded, unobtruded, but visible between every line ran a pure white thread through the smudged wrap of the story, the simple, all-enduring, sublime law, love of the old negress. Following her mistress unswearingly through everything to the end. When at least she paused, the physician spoke, asked if the house contained whiskey or liquor of any sort. There was the old woman informed him, half a bottle of brandy left in the sideboard by the dog wolf. Prepare toddy, as I told you, said Dr. James. Wake your mistress. 
have her drink it and tell her what has happened. Some ten minutes afterward, Miss, Mrs. Chandler entered, supported by all Cinder's arm. She appeared to be a little stronger since her sleep and the stimulant she had taken. Dr. James had covered with a street the form upon the bed. The lady turned her mournf mournful eyes once with a half-frightened look toward it and pressed closer to her loyal, loyal protector. Her eyes were dry and bright. Sorrow seemed to have done its utmost with her. The fount of tears was dried, feeling itself paralyzed. Dr. James was standing knee near the table, his overcoat donned, his head and medicine case in his hand. His face was calm and impassive. impassive. Practice had in inured him in inured him to the side of human suffering. His lambent brown eyes, lambent brown eyes, alone express a discreet professional sympathy. He spoke kindly and briefly, standing that stating that that the how was laid and assistance, no doubt, difficult to pro procure, procure. He would himself send the proper persons to attend, to attend to the necessary finalities. One matter in conclusion, said the doctor, pointing to the safe with its still wide open door. Your husband, Mrs. Chandler, toward the end, felt that he could not lie and directed me to open that safe, giving me the number upon which the combination is set. In case you may need to use it, you will remember that the number is 41. Turn several times to the right, then to you through the through though he knew the end was near. In that safe, he said, he had placed a sum of money, not large, but enough to enable you to carry out his last request. That was that you should return to your old home and in after days when time shall, <laughs> shall have made it easier for give his many si sins against you. He pointed to the table where lay an older pile of banknotes, surmounted by two stacks of gold coins. The money is there, as he described it, eight hundred and thirty dollars. I beg to leave my card with you in case I can be of you of any service later you. So he had thought of her, the kindly, at the last, so late, and yet the light fanned into life, one last spark of tenderness, where she had thought all was turned to ashes and dust. She cried aloud, Rob, Rob, she turned, and upon the ready bosom of her true survivor, Sir Whiter, the looter her grief in relay, relieving tears. It is well to think also that in the years to follow the murderer's falsehood shone like a little star above the grave of love comforting her and gaining the forgiveness that is good in itself whether asked or no. Hushed and soothed 
upon the dark bosom like a child by crooning, babbling sympathy. At last she raised her head, but the doctor was gone. That's the interesting, right? The, bar the burglar put his money, his own money, to help the lady, which is not really, not, not real, I think, in the real world. All right, guys, thank you for joining me today and see you tomorrow on the next story. It's going to be the final story of this 100 stories selection by O. Henry. Don't miss it. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.